Just talking about it, it's not difficult. <laughs> talking about it, it's not difficult. Let's have a person who can exercise his faith. Let's see it. What it can produce for him, him, him. Not books on faith. Not sermons and teachings about faith. Can you exercise it? Can you produce it? Can you make it to work? Can I see it? If the just shall live by faith, and you are one of the just, are you living by it? Can you say that you are getting your life from faith? Let me look into your life. That's what you have to do as disciples. Don't just get any piece of paper that you come across and then you read and you absorb it and you get it into your system. Look into the person's life. He's talking about faith. How much of it does he possess? Is it there? Faith, is it there inside of you? If it is there, what level? Because most people, they don't teach up to their level of faith. They go beyond I'm not saying we shouldn't be writing books. All of us, please, go ahead, write your book. But please, stick to your level. Because the other levels, you have never experienced them. There are levels of faith. Don't push people into levels where you have never been. Because once they are there, they will call you. And begin to ask you questions. How do I go about this? And you are wondering, where are you? He's telling you of a place where you have never been. So it's, it's better you teach people and stick to your level. Are we together? Because there are different levels of faith. Different levels of faith. Different levels of faith. Different levels of faith. When faith becomes a law. So the first law, which is the most important, is the salvation faith. The first faith that we have to talk about. The salvation faith. That one, it is the faith that you exercise for you to get born again. You require faith for you to have a transformed life. Even for you to be sure that your sins are forgiven. There is no certified letter that falls from heaven to confirm that you have been forgiven. Are we together? Yes. You have to understand that part. That when you are forgiven and you give your life to God, you are born again, you have to have faith. Unless you have faith, you can't say you are born again. That's the first faith. Do you know that when Jesus rebuked his disciples for them not having enough faith. It's a different type of faith that he was talking about. Not the first one. They'd already passed the first level of faith. Because it, it requires faith for a person to come to you and tells you to follow him. without <laughs> promising you a salary and you leave your profession, leave your board, leave your nets, you leave your fish and you follow a man that you are not sure of. 
You have never seen him doing, doing anything within his community. And he tells you to follow him. Follow me and I will make you. And right away, they left everything and followed him. That was an act of faith. It was salvation in picture. That is an act of receiving Jesus. Without getting a promise, a financial promise, and financial benefits, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. As short as that. And they followed. And that required faith. And yet after following him, he's asking them, where is your faith? Which means he's talking about another kind of faith, not the first faith, which is the salvation faith. So you realize that even after we are born again and we believe that we've been forgiven, we will still come short in other forms of faith and that can deprive us and cause us to live a miserable life but every other faith has to come out of this first, first faith very interesting subject in the word of God how do you get born again if we take away faith this whole thing about salvation gets even more complicated. Because how can you confess the Lordship of Jesus and just believe that you are now born again? Nothing changes on you physically and yet you are expected to believe that it is done. That cause for faith. Jesus, come into my heart. Ah. And that's it. And you're telling me it's over. That, that's it. That's all that I needed. To have eternal life. There has to be more to that. You see? You begin to question even your salvation because it was too simple. We are used to difficult things. It's too simple. How can that be enough? Just Jesus come into my heart and he comes. No, no, no. So we end up not believing the whole process of salvation because it is too simple. And also because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because we don't have the kind of sense that is required to comprehend that thing called salvation. 